Pastor Chris has been said to have responded to the fire situation that they had at the main branch recently. Now, uh, I want to actually look at what he said in that video or in the video that's been published around uh, concerning him. Actually, it is about the fire. Uh, but I want to talk about something alongside that. I want to talk about consistency when it comes to what I believe about my situation compared to how I will preach about other people's situation. And so uh, I saw some pictures saying that this is the branch that actually had burnt portions of it. And so it's a very big uh, church. Even if you look at the pictures that are out there concerning where the fire was, you will see that that's the same building uh, with this particular picture over here. So the angle confirms uh, that this is the same branch that has burnt. And so I'm going to talk about that, but I want to talk about it alongside this idea. Consistency about what I believe about my situation, concerning what I preach to others, and also how I let others interpret their difficulty. This is important one. This is important so that we can crush out all the, the misinformation that flies into the church conversations because of inconsistency, right? Now, I'll explain what I mean by inconsistencies. Now, this is what Pastor Chris said. When, when something like this happens, you look at it, what does God think? God just gives us an opportunity to do something about it. That's all. What are we going to do? Okay, great. The house of God. All right, it's been burnt down. Okay, all right. We'll cloud the place. Build a better one, a more beautiful one. Okay, so that's the first point of what he mentions there. Now, I'll come back to that point. But then the part where you are, which you are seeing in the, in the title, that it was not an accident, where does that part come from? That's, that's what we're going to do. That's what we're going to do. Let the devil lick his wounds. Let the devil lick his wounds. That's what he says. Yeah. That's it. Because we, we must look at life from the spiritual. This is not what you call an accident. No. Because we are not ordinary people. We are helped all the time. He told us even when, even when you walk, he says, don't worry. You wouldn't even dash your foot against the stone. Why? He said, because he gives his angels charge concerning you. So everything that happens in your life is on plan. All right. So now that's why I want to talk about the subject of consistency. Right. So here's a tragedy. It's a massive loss. Okay. It's a huge loss for the church. And so here he says, you know, we shouldn't think of it within the idea of tragedy in the sense that it's such a loss that it's out of God's plan. Now, the Bible does tell us that in difficulty, God gives us a way to escape or to navigate through situations through him, right? And that's where the whole thing of, you know, the one who endures. Some people have interpreted that concerning subjects, matters of going to heaven, even though the subject matter has nothing to do with that. The subject matter mostly has a subject matters of reward, because of how you handled it's like you being at work if you take on the uh, the duties that you get with the right perspective on life because you are using god's instruments of navigation you are rewarded because you you were like if you remember the video that i spoke about latoya's divorce latoya she's part of the flag community you know, those ones, gay people and stuff like that. And so I spoke about some of them have endured difficulties in the sense that they suffered pain 
at the hand of a man. And so they result that too. I'm going to become lesbian. And that's because they are handling pain the wrong way. Not how God wants us to handle pain. Now, just so that you have a background of consistency, of what I mean when I say consistency. Here he says, you know, what does God say about that? What does God say when we go through difficulty? And then he immediately goes to, we'll build. He doesn't answer what does God say about that. He just goes into, we'll rebuild. See, life is meant to be lived like that. If you watch the video that I made on the subject of Deborah Fraser's death, people spoke about how she was starting to get better. And I said, yes, that's life. Life is meant to be lived on the positive. Now, why do I bring the subject of consistency? Because when we listen to most of the so-called prophets nowadays, it's doom and gloom. Unless you do what I say, havoc is going to come your way. Trouble is going to face your life. You're going to have issues. You're going to have this. You're going to have this. So from their perspective, life is not meant to be lived in hope. We live life in dread of what the devil can do. But then when you hear his perspective of how he sees this situation, it's like on the positive side, we're going to rebuild. Why is there, therefore, no consistency when we now speak to the average person? Why is it that we are consistent about telling them about doom and gloom? The so-called prophecies of death. You are going to die. You, so, Because he endorses that stuff as well, right? Spiritual signs and so forth. And so... Why is there no consistency there? When you have a difficulty, this is how you perceive it. You can see this consistency with Paul. When Paul faces difficulty, he asks. In the book of Hebrews, he thanks them. In Hebrews chapter number 10, he thanks them. I thank you guys for, for giving in to my bonds because I was in trouble over there. Y'all came through for your mandem. But then God will reward you. Don't cast off your hope because you don't see the reward of it because the reward of it is in heaven where God is. He says that's a more better substance. He says you knew that you had a better substance. But when we talk to people, we talk about physical earthly substance. When it concerns them, do you see an inconsistency here? When you read Hebrews chapter number 10, he's very clear. You've done this good to me. You have a better substance in heaven, in God's presence. For what you did towards me. Don't cast off your hope. Chapter, th chapter 10, towards 36, all the way forward. So, when, when you see how they deal with tragedy from a personal from their personal life and how they want us to deal with tragedy run around gather a seed <laughs> when you have trouble you are supposed to be running around gathering seed money so that you can sow it's a lie because they don't abide by that they live life how it's supposed to be left i have difficulty it's just that. Someone leaves their church and faces difficulty. It's the case of denouncing your spiritual father. You see, they don't deal with things with consistency. That's the thing that I want to talk about. Why they inconsistent? Why there's no consistency in what they tell us versus how they deal with things. See, we must be very careful as preachers. We must be very clear on what line we tread on subject matters of what we are. We are very careful. Make sure we are very careful. The message we take for ourselves must be the message we give others. If, okay, I have difficulty, we'll just rebuild. That's the same for the other person. 
Why is it that it's different for the other person? No, you must sow a seed. You must do what? You know, seed of recovery. What? Inconsistency. Just wanted to talk about that. It, that's the thing that came to my mind. Not a Gates statement or anything. But I thought of the subject of consistency. We need consistency here. Yeah, tell me your thoughts down in the comment section. Structurality show. Daily Christian commentary videos. If it's the first time of a YouTube show. Check out some other videos that are down in the pinned comments. On the first episode, I was talking about the subject of people being taken advantage of. On this one, I'm talking about another. You can tell we are very progressive people. <laughs> I don't come back here to just repeat things. But I'm talking about things that are very important within the body. Y'all have a good one and I'll see you tomorrow.